Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. We're going to do another quick tip in Orca Slicer. We're going to talk about how to improve the surface finishes of those areas that your model that have been supported. So if you've got support structures in your models and you want to make sure that that or, or do your best to improve the surface finish of those areas that are basically touching your supports, there's a couple of tweaks um, and features within Orca that you can use to maybe try some things out to improve the finish. It's never going to be perfect but we can get pretty close. Um, and there's a couple of methods that I'll use. Um, so whether or not you've got a, a single material machine, so if you're using an ender or you know something where you've only got one spool of material. Um, and then my new favorite thing to do, which is to use two dissimilar types of uh, material, if you have something like an AMS or something like that that you can use, um, like I do on the Bamboo A1. But if you've got something else, um, you don't have the benefit of using it. We'll talk about that first. So I've got three models here um, sitting on the build plate. And these are basically just little holders uh, that plug into my little honeycomb wall structure here. And so I figured I'll do uh, kill two birds with one stone and print off a couple of little holders. And we'll do a support test because normally you wouldn't print it like this anyway. But um, be a good little test. So I've got uh, three objects here, but I want three different processes. Uh, and so to do that, you want to make sure that under the Others tab, in this case, if you want to do the same thing, then your print sequence under the Other tab in Special Mode is by Object. So it prints one object at a time instead of just doing, you know, one layer at a time. Uh, and then over on the Support tabs, I just want to make sure that every, that support is enabled. And then what you do is you come up here to Objects, and now we're going to go by Objects. You can see I've got this object highlighted. It is the first one being clicked. And down here, now I can then specify which settings I want this particular object to, to go through. So under the support settings for this one, I'm just doing straight up pretty much defaults, right? Default stuff. So this is PLA supporting PLA. Um, so I'm doing normal auto, no tree structures, no manual stuff. This is just straight up defaults. I'm doing a top Z distance of 0.2 millimeters. So this is the air gap between your support material and your model. So a 0.2 millimeter air gap. This is one of the areas that you're going to want to play with, to try and make supports easy to remove and to also play with the surface finish. The other area that I've identified as a feature for you to play with is this top interface spacing. So this, this specifically are the interface layers that are right before you touch the model. Right, so those interface layers are uh, the pattern there. How much, how tight that pattern is, how far that patterning is away. That makes a difference on the surface quality and on how easy this thing is to remove. So I'm basically doing a half a millimeter interface spacing on that, uh, and I'm telling it to do two interface layers. The number of interface layers I haven't really um, haven't really noticed a big difference in between if I've got one or two or seven interface layers. It hasn't really mattered much. Two seems to be the sweet spot. That is the default. That's where I've kept it. Um, and I'm just focusing on the top interface layers at this point. Uh, so, so again, defaults, half a millimeter interface spacing. So if we look at what the preview looks like in that, so if we scroll this all the way down, like we're going to do that first, and we go ahead and zoom in to our interface layers you can see these this darker layer if we roll this up and down so there's my normal two and a half millimeter support spacing now i have one interface layer there there's a gap there's the second interface layer and then i've got my material so i've got two interface layers sitting there and then my material goes right over the top of that so that is, again, how we're going to do this first one. The second one, if I click on the second object, that means this one here in the back. The difference is I've got the same top Z spacing, uh, the same air gap of 0.2, but I've changed my top interface to zero, so it's solid. So if we go this, if we roll this up, and if we go back here to the top one, and we just go ahead and take a look at this, we come up here to the top, you can see now... I've got the, the lines are together. There's no gap, right? There's no spacing. It's a, it's a solid interface layer supporting the rest of the model. So that's the second test we're going to do. And the third test is if we go ahead and click on the third one here, and this is for anyone using an AMS or multi-material, but I'm using two dissimilar um, filaments. So you can see here under my filaments for support, my support slash raft interface material is PETG. So the model is PLA, support interface material is PETG. 
pet G and PLA don't like to stick to each other. And so if you, if you do the same top Z distance and you also do a top interface spacing of zero, meaning you've got tight lines, no spacing in between, you end up with a pretty decent surface finish because things don't like those two materials don't like to stick with each other. And that looks exactly the same, except what you can do is, as we're scrolling up here, we see our solid interface layers and you change your color scheme up here to filament. You can see I've got basically white or gray PLA going on here and I've got my black pet G that's going down solid here. That is, those are my interface layers. So I've already printed these out. They're sitting on the bed. We're just gonna rip them off one by one and we're gonna, we're gonna rip the supports out and see how it looks and all that good stuff. So here we go. Okay, so here they are sitting on the bed. We've got our first one here. This is 0.2 millimeter, 0.2 millimeter air gap with a half a millimeter interface spacing. 0.2 millimeter air gap with no interface spacing, so a solid interface layer. And this is a 0.2 millimeter air gap and no solid spacing uh, or solid spacing with PET G as the interface layer. So let's rip each one of these off the bed and see how they come off. So if we take a look in here, just gonna plunge straight in. Give a little rock and that comes off really easy so there's our half millimeter spacing and our surface finish is oh so nice pretty good and let's do our second one this is 0.2 millimeter air gap with uh, a solid interface layer of pla so same thing grab a little bit harder to get out Came all out in one shot. Solid interface mm -hmm. layer. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but the it's nice and smooth. No problem. So not a real big difference between the half millimeter and the solid. Here's the half millimeter again. Get a little bit of line separation in there. You can see it. And if we look at the same thing here. Oh, it looks about the same to me. Not a big problem. So both of those work pretty good. And there's a third one. This is the PET-G. So I've got PET-G as the interface layer. This should pop right out. And there's our PET-G interface layer. Everything comes on and out with it. A little crusties around here. So a couple little bits in there that I just need to pick out. And the only major difference from a look from a look perspective, it looks pretty the same, but it is very, very smooth going with the pet and face layer. So on difficult materials like this white PLA seems to separate pretty easily. Sometimes when I get into grays or some of the other ones, um, it tends to the, from a PLA supporting PLA, it likes to stick a lot more. This white seems to come out really nice. So this really does depend per unit or, or per filament. The other item I get into every once in a while is if I'm doing um, the PET G interface layer uh, and you're doing dissimilar colors, is I will get this black line everyone, right? A darker line where that interface layer was. So if you're going to go with the PET G interface layer, go with something that's a similar color. It doesn't have to be the same color, but you know, if you're doing a dark PLA, use a use a dark PET G, so on and so forth. Um, but otherwise, I've used this method on several of my my standard prints here um, and pulling the support structures out of this material uh, using the PET-G method. This is my new favorite thing because there's zero cleanup I have to do. I don't want to clean anything out. Um, so on these little test ones, probably not super apparent, but um, much, much easier uh, to me with this PET-G interface layer. If you can use it, if not, then use one of those other settings. Uh, for PLA, PLA, and, and tweak and tune and play with it. So now I can actually go ahead and pop this up here. Now I've got some extra little storage. Good times. Have a great night. Talk to you soon.